There you go. And then you're scanning. Yeah. Okay. Then you get check the audio. Are you ready? Or yeah. I'd oh. like to introduce Dave Tippett for his uh, help with this Sunday club and keeping it running smooth and live streaming efforts. So it'd be welcome to welcome to Yeah. I've I've never closed one of these conferences before. So <laughs> Oh, I'm only closing today. There's another day. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, this is my third year back, actually, speaking, and it really proves that either y'all are really curious about the dark side of ortho, or you're very desperate for speakers. Either way, I'm fine. <laughs> I want to first thank my wife. She's back there, and she's about to get embarrassed. She's running the live stream for me, and she drove me here six hours. And I got to sit in the passenger seat and finish this presentation while she drove in the night and in the rain. So, yeah. And that was after, yeah. That was after uh, we worked all day to try to get shipments out the door so we could get here. So, anyway, this is uh, the ortho. I hope I don't bore you all too much. I'm going to try to keep it fun and exciting. Uh, but first off, um, I don't have all the answers. In fact, many of you may have more regarding this digital stuff. So I'm new to it. So this is like my snapshot of what a small lab, whenever they go into digital, looks like. So I, hey, I just said that. I just want to provide a snapshot of my digital workflow bumps, bruises, warts, and all. You know, I'm just going to open it all up, let everybody see how it's run in a small two-person lab. And I'm not here to sell anything, which... Many of y'all are probably thankful. Uh, and hopefully, the info I give you, many of you may already have answers. Maybe I can give you another little tidbit uh, that will help your lab. You know, just a little pearl you could take home. And I'm, if y'all want to throw out any suggestions too, I'm open. So that's my boss. <laughs> She's back there running the live stream. <laughs> She's getting really red right now. <laughs> it's better than me bringing you up here, right? I threatened to bring her up here. Yeah. <laughs> so we are truly a mom and pop ortho lab. So it's just me and her. And uh, I did own my own lab before, and I'll kind of get into that before. But this is the first time we're co-owners. And uh, this is our small little lab. So I sit right there. She sits right there. So I do the wire bending and the acrylic sprinkling, and she does the trimming and the polishing and the case entering and the shipping and the, I think she, her list is probably a little longer than mine, uh, and the raising of the kids and the washing of the dishes and the, all that stuff. And, uh, and then, <laughs> oh yeah, she's got way more of a job than I do. <laughs> so, and we're a digital lab. Uh, this is, actually it's been a year. I think we got these in September. Uh, I was really excited when they came in, uh, unpacked them, and it's in our dining room. <laughs> you saw our lab, it won't fit in there. So much to the chagrin of the, my wife, it's in our dining room, which actually works out great because it's a lot more dust free <laughs> in the dining room than it is in our lab. But we do have new plans. We bought two acres out in Farmersville, Texas, if that's not the most Texas sounding name ever. Uh, and we're gonna build a shop and on that shop we're gonna have a little area and you can see here's the production area, and uh, this is going to be our office digital department area. So uh, it, it's digital for this industry has come, and it's affecting even us small labs. Oh, did you see the bathroom? Oh, yeah, the bathroom's in there. That's mainly for me. I doubt she'll ever touch that thing. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that makes it more fun. But we're out in the country, so I don't have any neighbors to piss off. But 
Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle some of these pictures. When I was making my uh, presentation, I found all these pictures on my computer. And actually, it's when they had my iPad, they were taking selfies and so, of my kids. So this is my middle child, Beckett, and uh, he's introducing us to digital workflow, the fancy two-cent word that you've heard a thousand times. So digital workflow. So there's my three-year-old daughter who looks just like the one back there. Uh, and so what is a workflow and why do we call it digital? Well, a main workflow is, you know, taking a case from a doctor start to finish and then deliver it back to the doctor. Uh, but digital is disruptive. Y'all like the pictures on Madden? <laughs> it's disruptive, not in a bad way, but it changes things. I mean, we all know that. Um, it affects your workflow, so we didn't know what else to call this thing, so we all just call it a digital workflow. And it's, it's taking digital cases through your lab, and it takes a different route than the classic cases. So, hence digital workflow. So, <laughs> I drew out my workflow in this nice, easy, concise <laughs> mess. But basically, dentist using my software sends to me, and then using my software, I print 3D models or they send plaster casts and I produce it and it goes back, EasyRx makes the invoice, I send that back to the doctor the, and then I send statements through my zero, it's like QuickBooks online, uh, to the dentist, he pays me and then wife and I are on payroll and we run payroll through Gusto. So if you ever wanna ask me any questions about these, don't ask me, I don't know how to. So there is a method <laughs> to my madness in this whole presentation. Um, if y'all don't know, I have a, a, a YouTube channel called Retainer Designer. I think I'm at 18,700 subscribers. So there are a lot of people who like the dark side of ortho and are curious about it. Um, and I have a new, my phone just died. Uh, I have a new podcast called Burning the Midnight Ortho. And I get late at night, me and another lab owner will interview live and we'll get to talk about the business impacts and um, uh, I got to interview Tiffany Prater recently that's my last one and uh, she's a single mom who opened her own ortho lab just hired a first employee so it's a really great you need to go listen to that so I need to go back a little bit a little digital history I've always as you can tell I'm a little bit of a gadget freak I've always liked the new electronics and stuff coming out. Uh, in 2004, I opened my lab. So I graduated lab school in 2001, no, 2003. I got my CDT that year and then I opened my lab in 2004. Um, but in 2007, iPhones came out. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? I sold my Xbox and all my games so I could earn $500 so I could buy one of those because I was so excited about it. But if you remember, there were no apps the first year and a half. It was just web apps where you would go to a website using Safari and if you wanted to use that site, you saved it to your desktop and it looked like a little app. So I say this now because it kind of is going to come up later on in the presentation. But the only apps were the ones made by Apple. But a couple years later or a year and a half later, the Apple opened the app store and that's when they made their trillions of dollars. So. Uh, 2010, iPads came out, and I got a great idea, but let's back up a bit. <laughs> Anybody use WinVoice? Anybody? All right, yell out the software y'all use for your case tracking. QuickBooks? Everybody QuickBooks? Nothing fancy? I'm talking to the right crowd. Okay, so I started my lab creating invoices on QuickBooks. Like everybody, you get your paper scripts at the end of the month or whatever, and you type in line items and make your invoices and send it out. I know there's a dental lab version of that also. And the software was installed on my computer at that time, so I can only do it on that computer. In 2007, I believe, I found winvoice.com, and uh, it was a dental lab invoicing and case tracking software. And it was all online. It was on a web browser. And it didn't matter what computer you use, as long as it had an internet connection or browser, you could check your cases, you could enter in cases. So I could use it on any computer with internet. I could check when my cases were due from home before I drove to the lab. 
and I can know what time to get there. If I could sleep in or not, I could just check and see how many cases I had to do. So this, this turned my digital, it, where you enter your cases in first when they come into the lab. And that way you can always track it going through. Now, I like Winvoice. It's still out there. It looks exactly the same it did in 2007. And it's like 25 cents an invoice, so it's very affordable. And this is actually Winvoice Junior. I actually found this on the internet. And this was one that was like on Windows 95 or something like that, and that's what it looked like, doctor's cases and stuff like that. But this is what it looks like now. It's a web browser, and you got your lab status, scheduled today, due today, missed due, all that stuff. And then you have invoices, payments, reports, so you could actually bill out. Um, your invoices and stuff like that. You just logged in like you would your email. It was, it was cool. So as you can see, digital to me starts with the software. And I've always been thinking of digital. And in fact, in 2001 when I was in lab school, I thought, okay, internet. And I drew out what it would look like on paper. This is actually my drawing of menu systems and what would happen to the menu. And, and I actually found this, it was cool, I found that and how weird I was back then. But I actually, with my student ID, I bought Adobe software and I was gonna get, then it was Adobe Live or Go Live and I was gonna try to learn how to program. It didn't go very far. Uh, so then we're back to the iPads. So I thought iPads would make a great RX pad is what I was thinking. So instead of an RX pad, you give a doctor, the doctor picks up an iPad fills out the script and it sends it to you and they can do it right there by the patient and uh, you have a copy they have a copy and then this is my drawing of my ortho rx app and then here's all the scripts and i have my little buttons that i drew and my notes on the side and i wanted to make it for all labs not just mine uh, and that was my goal so my ortho rx app i found these pictures okay so in 2011, I really wanted to pursue this, and I contacted an app developer, and I actually paid him 500 bucks of my birthday money for a scoping fee to see if this was feasible. And actually, you can, patient name, the address, we were just kind of spitballing here, and, and then of course the arch and things like that, and due date, and it, I'm showing you all this because A, I was glad I found it. B, you're gonna see the software I use now, we were thinking in parallel. Uh, and I was going to pay for it by putting ads there. So like Avaclar could pay for an ad and it would show up on every doctor's script. And I was going to pay for it that way. Or you could pay for a premium price and put your logo there in front of the doctor when they were filling it out. So then there's all the scripts and the patient name and all that stuff. And then that's where the teeth were supposed to go. Um, more stuff and the keyboard that would pop up so that the doctor could type or the assistant could type the name and not <laughs> write it out and where you can't read it and then I also wanted the teeth to where you could tap on a tooth and have the option to extract the tooth extract the tooth and shift all the teeth up place a pontic place a band so I was kind of thinking not just ortho but everything I, how cool would it be to have a software for RPDs where you could remove the teeth, put place ponics, and draw the clasp exactly how it's going to look. Uh, and, it's, and of course, you can draw on the iPad. And they can, this is the uh, software guy. Didn't, he was putting backwards C clasp and stuff on there. You can, up here is like pin, highlight, and then export and done. So there's my sad face. So when I contacted him, just the doctor app alone was $9,000. I was like, ugh. Now, for the doctor to be able to send it to me, 22500 that was to build the server, build the app that talks to the server that any lab can then just log into the server and get all their scripts. And uh, so I was like, oh, I can't do that right now. I was a manager in a lab. <laughs> so, uh, and that didn't include, that was just setting it up for the first time. That didn't include continuous updates and bug fixes. That, like, if it crashed or or Apple would update their software and, and break my app, I'd have to pay him again. So I didn't think the ads and stuff would sustain itself, and so I was sad, I had to let it go. But then I saw EasyRx come about. 
And this guy named Michael Wright with ODL, probably one of the largest ortho labs in New York, Buffalo, New York, next to Great Lakes Ortho. I'm sure y'all might have heard of them. Um, he was developing it. Now, they were a bigger lab. We're talking 20, 30 employees at the time. Uh, they had the funds to actually hire programmers on staff instead of farming it out. And they were going to, just like I wanted to, they're going to open it up to all the doctors and labs that wanted to use it. Um, there are other softwares that are like this, but it's closed just to that lab. And uh, if they won't let any other lab use that software. So in 2014, I invited Michael Wright to the DLAT meeting because I was in charge of bringing in speakers and I was selfish because I wanted to hear him talk about his software. So this is him. I actually found this picture on my computer. This is him giving a, a speak, uh, talking about his software and digital workflow in 2014. Now, ortho labs are a little bit different than Crown and Bridge. Y'all got your digital early, CAD CAM, milling, all that stuff. The subtractive stuff didn't work for ortho, but the additive stuff, the 3D printing, when that started coming along, that really changed the game for us. It, before then, it was just plaster models. And then we actually, in that 2014, you can't see it very well. We have to turn the lights off. Uh, but they're talking about models. We brought in this company called SculptCAD, and they were selling these object printers. And they were $40,000 for the, the printer um, that would print models that we could then make retainers on. So there's the... The, oh, there's Don. You were probably at this meeting. I was. Yeah, you were probably at this meeting. In fact, I think that might be you right there. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so digital workflow in the early days, only big ortho labs had the means, to, the way to run 3D printers, because the 3D printers cost forty to hundred thousand plus for the 3D printers and they're big huge things and they could build rooms and and have staff to man them and and all this stuff and and us little labs couldn't do it. Ooh, very nice. Uh, small labs we couldn't compete so as more doctors bought oral scanners the more they looked for labs that could take their scans which was sad it was like hey Kate I bought a scanner do you have a, a printer? No doc I don't have a hundred thousand dollars if you pay your bill. May, no I'm just kidding. Small labs would lose business to the bigger labs. So that's the early days. So why digital workflow now in these small ortho labs? And as you can see, that's a 3D printed study model. I thought this was a funny picture. I'm actually using my old model trimmer that I don't use anymore to trim off the little supports on the back to make it smooth for the doctor. This doctor pays me to print these for him. And so that's a, a 3D printed resin model. He just sends me the file and I print it. So I wanted to future-proof my lab. Now, uh, I mentioned before, I started my lab in 2004. Um, I merged it in 2008 with a Crown and Bridge lab, and I opened an orthodontic department within that lab, trained a couple technicians, got it going. Uh, then I moved on to a big ortho lab, was a manager there, and we grew that one. Uh, and in 2017, I was driving an hour to the lab, working 12 to 14 hours, my wife knows about this, and then driving an hour back. So it was, we were, I was just gone way too much. So um, I've been, I've been thinking about this. So while I was working with other labs, we saw the digital coming. In fact, that SculptCAD company, I was doing splints for them because they didn't have a resin yet that would, could stay in the mouth for 24 hours. So they would print these uh, surgical guides and I would duplicate them and turn them into using ortho acrylic that could stay in the mouth and they'd wire them all shut. Um, they actually were tired of driving. They'd print the models or the splints and they'd drive an hour to drop it off at our lab so I could duplicate it. So they're like, you know what? We sell these printers. We have this extra one. Let's put it in your lab. So I actually got to play with one back in 2016 or so. Uh, and it was that object printer and it took up a whole desk. But as y'all know, existing labs find it hard to change workflows. Um, so it's hard to get the labs I work for to, to change over to digital, to go with EZRX, to go with a printer, because it just, it was just the disruptive and expensive at that time. 
So I, my lab that I opened up in January of 2018, um, I had a, a unique advantage, and it was I started with the digital in mind. And so I say all this, but you still got to keep up. Don't forget, you always need to offer classic services, the things you do now, to some of your clients. My example, and I don't know much about this, but offering CAD CAM while still offering full gold crowns. It's not like the doctors completely switched over to Emacs or, or whatever, and uh, that you still produced PFMs and things like that. Am I getting these terms right? Yeah, I learned them in lab school, and that's the last time. <laughs> so there's no school like the old school. I was trying to get, hey, anybody watch The Incredibles? The, they had those two old men, and they're like, yeah, no, no school like the old school. I was trying to get a clip here, but it, it didn't work. Uh, we need software and digital services that can offer both digital and classic services side by side. Um, so it, you can't have your new digital completely take over your lab because you still got to offer the classic services to the doctors that don't want to go digital. So it's almost they have to run parallel with each other. So we're back to this. So dentist, so as you can see, I put this here. This is a hand drawn from a script that he sends to me that, to my lab, and I upload it back to EZRX and produce this from it back to here, back to there. So it provides two routes, and we'll talk about those, uh, one digital and then one classic without causing too much disturbance. But it's all contained, as you can see, EZRX bookends my lab, and so it's we're we're in there together. So what is EZRX? It's a universal lab prescription, digital software and 3D software platform. So all the nerdy stuff I like, it's all right there in one sentence. Uh, and I contacted, one, one good thing about EZRX is they're really good with support. Again, I'm not selling anything, I'm just showing you what I use. Um, but I actually got to email the CEO, Todd, and I can't say his last name, Blankenblecker. Something like that. But he was the CEO of Dolphin Software. You ever heard of Dolphin Software? It's an imaging. He was the CEO of that for a while, and then he bought EZRX from Michael Wright. And they've just taken off with it. And so he sent me his slides. And so this will explain it better than I can. But you can see they're trying to be the, the nexus of everything you do now, both digital and analog. So EZRX connects commercial labs practice management softwares, digital design softwares, in-house labs, 3D printers, STL files, plaster models, and then universal lab prescription form, which is nice. We don't, everybody uses the same form. Uh, so they have, the core products is the universal lab prescription form, digital workflow management, EZRX uh, 3D modeling, which is one of my favorite features. Uh, now I'm going to break this up into, I'm going to try to go through these slides as fast as possible so I can actually show you in, in action and live. So this is all done in web browser. So you got to remember that. It's all done in web browser. You don't have to install software. Uh, but this is what the doctor fills out. Patient name, due dates. Um, we'll go over this. I'll go through this pretty quick. But this is the doctor side. Um, and this, they can see the list of cases they've sent out and they can mark them as received, delivered, they can view it. Um, and you see this bar right here? We share, the labs share this bar, progress bar with the doctor. So the doctor submits it, we see a check mark there. Us labs check it in, gives a date, and then when we check it out, it marks it complete, the doctor knows it's ready, and then shipped. So whenever we ship it or do a delivery, there's an ended day that you do, and then it marks all those cases as shipped and tells the doctor, and then track outbound package. You can actually put tracking numbers in there so they can actually track it. Before they call you looking for a package, they can look and go, oh, it's completed. It's shipped. Let me track it. Oh, it's coming tomorrow. I don't need to call them. So it view and support digital files. So these are STL files within the online prescription. Um, and then, of course, you can edit those 3D files within the web browser. Click on one of those files and it opens up the 3D editing software. Again, within the browser, you don't have any software to download. And you can trim, base, and label in under two minutes. Now, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, I, I believe it, but I got uh, a database full of numbers that show you how fast I can do it. Um, so here's your, your print list. So 
Um, these are all the digital files that need to be printed in your lab. And you can, you can click on all these, and then you click on your printer, and it ships it to your printer, your, for, your, your layout software for your 3D printer. So you never, you never have to download uh, 3D models and fill up your hard drive. It, it's all done virtually in the cloud. The, another two cent word. And then of course, you can mark, uh, uh, let me get through these. These are all the doctor side. Uh, they also keep up with the liners, uh, appliances, templates. That's another thing that I'll show you all in the demo. And of course, current software integrations, these are all practice management softwares. Um, actually, that's a one created by a lab too, but it's not open to other labs. Uh, but Dolphin, there's Dolphin 9. So these are practice management softwares that they can, EasyRx just does this to all the other softwares out there. So they can be looking in their practice management software, look at a patient, and go create EasyRx. It opens up a little window. They create a prescription. It saves it to the practice management. It's it's cool, and I don't understand it. Uh, and then intraoral scanner integrations. There's a third or fourth one now. So this is this is from January of this year. Um, so they're speaking to all scanner manufacturers, and I'll show you how they integrate with this software. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then of course 3D printer. I think they've added a few. There's Form Labs and Vision Tech, uh, Sprint Ray. Anybody, 3D printers? Anybody here? Over there? What do y'all got? Bago? What? Colzer? Yeah, I, I, uh, did y'all see the JDT this month? And it had the survey of results and the most popular printers and the best reliability and all that stuff. It's, it's a really good article to read. And I was going to put it in here, but I ran out of time. Um, and then, of course, the usage is increasing. This is prescriptions submitted by doctors to labs has increased from this much to this much as our user base increases. Now, one of the best features of EasyRx is this hollow model. So you can print your models hollow and save on resin. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, they've, they have 225 labs right now uh, from last year, and it's probably double, doubled by now. Uh, and then, of course, we're back to my workflow. So I'm going to go over the check-in of what it looks like coming in from the doctor. So this is my desktop. This is an actual shot of my desktop of the, the patients that have come in from a doctor that has submitted them through EZRX to my lab. And, of course, I've blocked out the patient names the best I could. Uh, but you can see date submitted and the date they need it and check in, view, and edit. And of course, the, the practice name and the office, and it keeps up with different offices. Uh, one lab I worked at, they had a doctor that had five different offices and five different doctors, and those doctors would switch offices on a weekly basis. And they used like numbered colored dots on prescriptions to tell you where to deliver it and who to bill. And it took a, a whole different separate person to bill out that, but this, See, I'm future-proofing my lab because I saw that coming. This will take care of all that. You can have different doctors, who to bill, and it, and it does it automatically. So cases come in. This is a box of models that came in. Nicely packed. No broken teeth in this one. Uh, and as you can see, we put them in case pans with numbers. Everybody use case pans here? There are some ortho labs that just lay out the models on a table, and they write this instructions on it. I can't, I don't know how they do it. Anyway, uh, so it's good. Y'all know what case pans are. So th this side, it, the left side is the EZRX with physical model submission. So this is, they filled it out on EZRX, submitted it, and then shipped me the model. Now, the cool thing about that is I s knew the models were coming before the models got there. So if I saw they just submitted 14 appliances, we can then block out in our schedule. Oh, we need to do these. These are the due. We already know the due date. We know when they're coming because we can track them within the software. And so it's kind of like a warning uh, to get these models. Now, uh, over here is the classic way a script and models. EasyRx, you get intermittent in both ways. So. so at the menu bar, you have workflow. And you have check-in and written check-in. So check-in are the ones the doctors send you digitally. And written check-in are the classic paper script model. 
Uh, so the check-in the doctor submitted is for digital models and plaster models. You see how they're starting, they're going parallel. They didn't say, we're going to go all digital and screw the rest of you that do analog. It's like, hey, we got a method for both ways. You can, you can provide for your doctors either way. I have doctors that don't use the EasyRx at all. They have no idea I use it, and I earn them into EasyRx just like a regular software. So then a written check-in paper prescription and you can also scan those paper prescriptions and put them into EZRX in that patient's file so you can actually pull that patient up click a, a file link and you can actually see the paper script so you can see they're just trying to help out as much as possible so um, this is the that home screen I've uh, clipped out a certain area of it and you if once you click check in so this is the doctor provided the green means it's digital, there's STL files attached to it, and the white means there's plaster models coming in the mail. And so when you click on it to check it in, the first thing you're going to see is a sample of the prescription. So it's kind of like sitting at the desk and you're entering in the case using the script and you're seeing the models there. So you see uh, uh, the prescription, and of course my favorite is this is the iTero integration. So when the doctors are filling out the EZRX prescription, they put the Idtero ID, and EZRX goes into my Align Tech, pulls all those scans, and puts them in that script. Uh, so I don't have to sign up for my Align Tech or Three Shape or any of those services because uh, EZRX goes and gets all the files for me. Uh, so you can see, you know, occlusal, the different views. Notice the brackets, that's going to come in a little bit. You can see a preview of the scan. And then, of course, you put the bin number in so that you can search. in. When you search for prescriptions, you can search for bin number, last name, doctor. It, it's, it's a whole database. And then, of course, date needed. This is uh, what the doctor asked for. Now, um, once you click on shipped, so if I go back, you'll see ship date. Uh, so date needed, they asked for the 7th, you know, and you need to ship it on the 6th, whatever y'all's time schedule is to get it out. Oh, no. I pulled a Marlin. Okay, we're here. So once you click on that little area, you get a nice little calendar. I like it. I'm visual. I like to see the, the calendar, and you can choose the date, and it's a week. Um, and it, you get the next. Now, the cool thing is... In EZRX, you can actually say how many days in the lab you need. And you can say which are your business days, which days are you off. And it will calculate when the doctors enter in and try to choose a due date that you're off, like July 4th or Christmas Day, that it won't let them do it. Or if they do it within, say, I have a five business day turnaround. If they try to ask for a shipping date in four business days, it alerts them, won't let them do it. They actually have to call me for me to override it. So that's my, one of my favorite parts. And uh, it actually calculates. You can set in there, even with they're off on Fridays, you can say they're off on Fridays, and they can't choose that as a delivery date. It will block them out from choosing a Friday as a delivery date. And so it calculates all that. And then you can say it takes two days to ship to them, plus it's a Friday, and so it extends out the due date that they can choose and suggest a good due date. Now, as you're entering in this in and you're filling out the ship date, it's listing all the prescriptions that you've already entered in and the ship date you have. So you can actually choose, like there's a bunch going out on the 4th, there's a bunch going out on the 8th. You're like, okay, they want it on the 9th. Okay, it's going to go out with all these 7th. So you can actually start batch shipping right as you're entering in the case. So we're back to, there's the ship date. So 3D printed models. So obviously we need to charge for printing, uh, which is here. And you come up with these in your own. So I have two horseshoes, horseshoe upper and lower, two full pallet models, because with ortho, uh, you need the full pallet for RPEs and, and uh, stuff like that. Usually the horseshoes, horseshoes are for uh, Essex. Um, and then, of course, you got all these options. It, they can ask for digital study models. They can ask for study models. Uh, you see that bracket carving? I didn't cut this out. I didn't snap this out very good. But I see 
they have brackets, I can say bracket carving upper, bracket carving lower, and it automatically charges their account. Not doesn't charge their account, bills them. Start, it starts whatever you choose here. So that 3D printed model, when I choose upper and lower horseshoe, it automatically adds $22 to their invoice. And then when I do bracket carving, already automatically adds it. So it starts building your bill as you go. Uh, model duplication, uh, bands. So ortho, we do a lot of bands. And you can, I have a price for each of these. So one is practice is sending model with impression with the bands in it. Um, and all the, the different options that you can get bands from a doctor. And then you can choose the band type. You can have different prices for that. And the number of bands in the arch. Um, and I skipped this right now, but if it's a repair or replace, you can actually put the ID of the past in there. Or if it's a break, they can actually go to the old script in EasyRx and request repair, and it just copies over all the data, and they choose a new due date, and uh, you don't have to re-enter re in. Now, the billing item, you come up with this. So they're trying to work with every lab in each lab's workflow so, you know, you put your rush in there, you put your bracket carving, shipping, 3D, oh, anything you think of that you need an extra bill to bill the doctor for, you can put it in there. And then you check in prescription. Okay, so written check-in, so that the left side here, same thing, but you choose the practice and you can choose the doctor. You can choose ship to, to office, uh, bill to office. So all those you enter in or the doctor enters in and they say uh, deliver on this date but to this office. And the great thing is when you go to check them out, it will invoice out and give you where to ship each batch and give you a list. So you don't have to accidentally ship uh, appliance to the wrong office and vice versa. And of course, they type the name in. Uh, that was that part. And then check in and view RX, and then there's also check in and edit. There's two different paths. The view is the digital version of the paper. So you can actually have a paperless lab if you want. You just have your laptop, your iPad, or whatever, and you get all the information on here. You get that same progress bar that the doctors get. Uh, you get, of course, all the information, all the shipping. You get a parts list. Uh, you get a view of the, you can download the PDF if you still want paper, uh, and then edit RX. So this is the edit screen. This little circle right here, you can actually move it, and it will stretch out that labial bow over different teeth. Uh, you can move the Adams clasp up and down. I know this is probably, I don't know, if it's a C-clasp, y'all know C-clasp. Yeah, so if it's a C-clasp, you can move it up and down and around. Uh, so you have the name up here, and you can actually click on the name and see all the scripts associated. So if it's a patient, it keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. Um, it, you can see how many scripts you've made for them and what you made, what was the last color you made it, what was the shade of the Pontic you made last time. Uh, you can pull up all that info right there. And then you can actually see this. In labs, you can turn this off. But as you build this thing, as you add a... So here's a parts library. I'll get to that in a second. As you drag over an Adams class, it, it puts that on the invoice. And then as you drag over the acrylic, it puts it on the invoice. So and you see a parts list. Labial bow, you can choose wire gauge. Now, they do have crown and bridge parts and dentures. So you can drag over a PFM crown, and then they can say what shade it is and how much uh, thickness. Bob, I don't know. So there's view. Oh, that's what you click on. That's the uh, the EZRX number. So that's the number of that script. And it's unique to this patient. Nobody else in all of ER, EZRX's database has that number. So it's very HIPAA compliant. All their servers are HIPAA compliant, so you don't have to worry about that. And then, like, no more emailing STL files and stuff like that. And then you have your toolbar here that you use to build this out. And, of course, the view of it and the part options. I just went over all that. This is the best thing, templates. I don't know. With ortho, most doctors about 90% of the time get the same thing over and over and over again. So they don't have to build it part by part. They can build it once, save it as a template, and they just click Add, and it pops up. Then it's just their 
And right there is where you choose the paintbrush is where you choose the, the colors of the acrylic. And then the parts library that I just spun around real quick, um, that's a genius thing. They've, they've tried to incorporate every single ortho part out there. It's almost as bad as like different types of implants and abutments. There's just tons, and they're all called different things, but they're the same thing. Uh, but I think EZRX is doing a good job of keeping it all the same, uh, making everybody use the same terminology. So you print the, the EZRX. This is how it comes out. You get a barcode you can scan, which is fun. So when it, you go to check out, you can scan everything, your whole list, and it starts checking them out. Done. Complete it. Complete it. Complete it. Starts building an invoice for you to build a doctor with and then give you shipping. Uh, but I've come to find out that doesn't fit very good in the, the case pan because you fold it in half and then you, you're looking like this at the case pan and it starts hurting your neck. So uh, actually Sarah came up with this. Uh, if you print it in landscape and scale it down to about 70%, 75%, you can actually get it to fold in half and it fits in your case pan. So it, it, just that, that digital version all that info is right there, the same info. Now, the classic workflow continues from there. and We all kind of know what that is. You, you have a plaster mold and you make a retainer on it. So, but the digital workflow starts from there. So this is where it kind of starts veering off. Um, it takes a detour. And this is where EZRX 3D comes in. This is one of my favorite things they've added recently. It's included with all paid versions of EZRX, and it's a web-based STL file editing. You just need a computer with internet and a browser, and that's, that's all you need. You don't need to download any software for it, and uh, may, you don't have to have like a heavy-duty gaming computer with graphics card to handle the 3D software. You just need a web browser and pretty good amount of RAM, uh, and then it, it, it simplifies it. It just trims, bases, and labels it, gets it ready to print. It took the best of other software, so if y'all have heard of NetFab, Mesh Mixer, all those, it took all those that aren't dental based and just collected all the, the pieces we need as a dental lab and uh, condensed it all together. And now they just now added artifact removal and now bracket removal. So now you can remove brackets off the teeth before you print. So a lot of doctors will take a scan of the patient before they get their braces off and uh, we take the brackets off just like with plaster models. So this is the bottom of a script on EZRX and you can see here's all the files attached to that script. So it's HIPAA compliant and you have the original and then EZRX goes in there and cleans it up, fixes it, repairs it, removes artifacts that it can uh, and then makes an optimized version. That's what I always use down there and you can always download it right here if you need to if you want to use a separate software. Oh, I have an arrow. So there's the iTero case, and you can actually re-export. If you have a software OrthoCAD, OrthoCAD it'll, it'll connect to it, and then take that model and throw it into another software. Uh, and then this is all the files that they did, and that's the uh, optimize button. But it, it, EZRX optimizes it automatically. So usually by the time you view it, after the doctor submits it, it's already optimized for you. And then those are all the pictures, front and side, occlusal, so you can actually see uh, what you're looking at. You click on them and a, and a picture pops up of the teeth. And so when you click on one of those, you get this, and you can either view or edit. I rarely view. That's usually when I need to look and see if there's something going on with the case, if the doctor asks for something crazy. Or I mainly use the edit. And this is the screen you get. This is a web browser. I'm, I'm going to demo this in a little bit. It's... And the internet, you don't have, it, maybe I'm the only nerd that likes this, but I think it's cool. All the editing and resolution stuff's done on their servers, and you're just seeing a view of it on your side. So it's a lot, kind of a live stream of your, your edits. So over here you have the patient name, which I've blocked out. Uh, you can optimize it if it's not. Uh, and then that's where the artifacts live on that side. But you mainly use this side over here. And then, of course, you got your model that you can manipulate and rotate and turn it around inside your web browser just like uh, you would any software. Uh, and then this is your orientation. So if you get lost in the way it's at, you can click one of these and get back to center. Now, the first step 
and it's just a very simple is you orient the model and that helps EasyRx find the occlusal plane. It's three dots, left molar between the centrals, right molar, and it makes a triangle. And it figures out from that which side is the occlusal side, um, which is where's the anterior, where's the posterior, and where's the inside and outside of the scan. Because as you know, the 3D scans are open scans. Um, and it uses the coordinates for uh, the rest of the steps. So I'll get to that in a minute. So the second step is uh, trim the model. And it, it pretty much, you draw, you trace a line around the whole thing, uh, and it tells, you tell EZRX, trim everything on the outside and throw it away and keep everything on the inside of this trim. Uh, and then there's a cutting plane available if you want to chop off the backside and make a nice smooth plane if you want to print vertical. And then, of course, you go, you just, that whole column, you just automatically just keep going down that as you go. Couldn't be simpler. Uh, third step, you choose a hollow base or you choose regular if you want, that's a solid model, but who wants to print a solid model? Uh, so there's hollow, and of course there's base height, and there's just some preset ones uh, you can click real quick, and that how big you want your base, how tall you want it to sit up off of the counter. And then of course your wall thickness, I usually go with three, mainly because I use a uh, model holder, and I crank it down to hold it in. Well, I notice with the 2.5, it flexes a little bit, so when I bend my wire, <laughs> Uh, it, it fits fine and I take it off the model holder it doesn't fit anymore so I, I use a three millimeter wall thickness and then of course drain holes and I, I need to talk about drain holes because the drain hole serves three functions drain extra resin so these are hollow models they got drain holes under here when I take it out of the printer I just tilt it give it a few minutes and all the resin drains out and I capture it in a little Tupperware that I stole from my wife and then I, I just dump it back into the 3D, print it, 3D printer and I kind of keep up, I don't use as much resin. And it keeps my, my uh, you wash these in alcohol bath, it keeps your alcohol bath uh, cleaner a little bit longer. You don't have all this resin floating around in your alcohol bath. It prevents cupping, it's a l this is a little hard, but you can kind of see this looks like a suction cup. It's hollow on the inside and there's my three millimeter wall going around. As this thing's printing upside down, that will actually cause a suction if you don't have drain holes any way of fluid uh, or air to get in there and it will actually pull your print bed up <laughs> and cause blowouts and misprints and stuff like that so um, it puts it prevents that and then it aids in the removal from the build plate if y'all mess with them sometimes you really got to scrape hard so I got my little tool and there's a little piece of the drain hole I just kind of put my tool in there and twist a little bit and it pops off and then you the next step, the fourth step, uh, is you add the label, which you need because when you get them out of the printer, they all look the same. So you need to have, have them nice and labeled. Um, and you get five presets to choose from. Now, these are all pulled from the RX info. So you don't have to type this in every time. It, it goes and finds the name and goes, okay, you want to put it there? All right, here's the bin number. So I always put two labels. I put a patient name and a bin number. And you can put a custom text if you want. You can put your lab name or whatever on there. Uh, and you get you engrave or emboss. So emboss, it, the name sticks out from the model. And engrave, it's embedded in the model. Always do engrave because it's less resin and less support you have to do. Uh, the ability to add two different labels. So you can have two different labels, two di different info that goes with the labels. And they come from the script. So these are all done kind of within the, the script of that patient and then you go to save it the fifth step you you can modify you can name it whatever you want right here uh, and then it saves it back into the patient file so now you have your files attached to the case um, the original is still there so you didn't destroy that original when you made it it's still there if you need it um, and the new model is down here and it's renamed hollow and I'd, I put upper on it so I know which one's the upper, which one's the lower. And then it's ready to export to the 3D printer. Now, 3D edit times, we get back to that uh, where it takes two minutes. I believe that. But in real life, you're going to run into problems. So I created a database and I tracked myself. Um, this is the screenshot of my database. I want to see how long on average it takes me to edit one of these in uh, EasyRx. So 
I timed myself editing 53 models. I think I'm gonna go on to 100 models and get a good section. Uh, and then from the time I clicked edit till the time I saved the model, so I, that screen that said view or edit, I click edit, I start the time. And so then till the time I hit the save button, I got confirmation it saved back into the patient, I made that time. And it, it, I averaged ten, five minutes a model. So that's the real 3D edit times. Now this includes the five minutes over those 53 models includes scan issues, bracket removals, artifacts I had to remove, if I had to redo a step because something was messed up. And so I, I was able to pull the average time with no problems. And it was three, three minutes and 35 seconds per model to edit. Uh, the average horseshoe model, just a few seconds faster, three minutes, 24. Uh, the average full plate, full pallet, so like for when we make a retainer with a full, I, gotta, I can't do a horseshoe on that. So that takes a little longer because it, it's thicker. So it, it takes a little time to process those. And then average time to remove brackets. This is, I have to actually download it because I don't have, that is a new feature, the bracket removal on EZRX. I actually have to download it pull it in the mesh mixer, remove the brackets, and then re-upload it into that patient file, and then I can edit the file. But just to remove the brackets right now is 332, so I need to increase the price of my bracket removal. And then it's time to send to the 3D printer. So this is the STL print list. It, it's found in the menu in your EZRX, and it lists every single model. So right here is only show EZRX-based models, otherwise it'd show every original file, every optimized model, it'd be cumbersome and then you can all, as long as you show which ones are printed you keep up with checking when they're printed it only show models that are not printed and then you'll have a set of five or six and you just click all this and then click that button and it opens my preform software that goes with my form too so this is a, a video of me doing I couldn't capture it so I'm actually holding a phone and trying to do this with a camera so you can see I, I selected those models and I was looking at the case pans while I was doing it and I click that button right there and remember this is in the browser so then it it goes into my computer and opens my preform software and I, I was going down here because it'll pop up there in a second and then it'll take all those models and throw them into my my layout software so I don't have to download them to my computer and then reload them in there it pops open now this is sped up I'm not this fast but uh, you can lay them out. It, I just do automatic uh, layout and then I do supports. Uh, this whole video is actually two minutes, 27 minutes, two minutes, 27 seconds long. So it really doesn't take long to send them to the printer. So then the, I've created the supports. I check it. Uh, you'll see me go to the keyboard. I hit page up. You can see what the very first layer looks like. Make sure you have your drain holes in there and you can see all the supports and you can use that slider, it's fun to do, and you can see it being built real fast. And then you get these thumbs up, you get all thumbs up, you're good to print. And you're ready to go. Here's the pricing for all that. Uh, you can have a free account, so if you have a doctor that uses EZRX and wants to send you EZRX, you can create a free account and you can go in there and uh, edit uh, those files and you can download the script and you have a script uh, and you can download the uh, STL files too. Now this is a month and it's you get the EZRX 3D and you get a bunch of stuff. You can create 300 RXs per month now uh, which is good for me. I, I don't do that nearly that many but this is what I have and this is what I pay per month because I want to future proof my lab and make it as simple as possible to run a digital lab with just two people. So this, and then we'll get into invoicing and stuff if you want, this is um, allows me to have an extra person doing things that I don't have to hire. Because it this does a lot of the stuff that I don't have to deal with. Uh, they are, I'd ask the CEO, I was like, is there any kind of special I can give you? Uh, they have this special in the fall right now, 12% annual discount for two years. I'm not selling anything, all right? <laughs> I just want it, if y'all want to do it, here's a, I don't get any kickback for this. And uh, you get to lock in that 12% for two years and the implement, implementation fee is waived, which is $1,000, which is 500 up front and they 
set you up on your own server and do all the nerdy stuff so you have your own server and it's all HIPAA compliant and set you up on your EZRX and then they train you and they do a thorough training so because uh, it's it's a different mindset uh, than paper scripts obviously if you want to take a picture uh, these are links if you want there's the link to EZRX if you want to go look around this is the guy I talked to he does not push any kind of sales but if you have questions about it um, he's more than willing to, to help you very nice guy uh, and then that's his phone number and then he actually has a you can schedule an online meeting with him at this link so you type that into your web browser and it takes you to his calendar and you can say hey I want to talk to you on Thursday the 24th and you choose the time and he'll call you and set up a web link and he'll go you answer all your questions that you have so let's talk about 3d printers what how am I looking on time for okay let's talk about 3d printers um, now here's a tip for those that do ortho those that are live streaming that are watching do we have anybody watching the live stream do we have anybody watching the live stream oh, okay <laughs> I'm so popular <laughs> I I like to print horseshoe as much as I can if I print it this whole base it'd be a lot of resin and resin is $150 per liter so you want to save as much as you can. Notice I drain it and then I try to pour it back in. Uh, so I actually, when I pour up a model, you know, I still do the classic stuff. I always mismeasure, I always get more than I want. And instead of throwing it in trash, I make a big plaster patty. And I put it on a model trimmer and I trim the base. And then I zap it. And I get the zap it from Hinden, plug. And I zap it. You see my little pink zap it. And I zap it to the base. And that, that fits my model holder. It makes it easier to bend. And I noticed when I was sprinkling the 3D printed models, I, I made the base so small my hand would cramp trying to hold it and sprinkle. So this big base is better for my big hands. So why did I choose the Form 2? Uh, the price. Remember what I talked about, what it was in 2014? 40000 100000 This is $3,500. And you're immediately digital. A doctor calls you. And, th and it, this happened funny because... Um, a doctor I worked with for 20 years who I thought was very conservative with his money and was like, oh, I won't have to worry about him buying an intraoral scanner. Well, it happened. He called me up and said, hey, you got a 3D printer? I got a scanner. I was like, what? I thought I had two years because I was saving up. But it, it, it'll happen. You'll get a call. And some of you maybe already had a call. Do you accept scans? And I want it to have the EZRX software and say, yes, I do. 3D printer, yes, I can print it. Large Dental Lab user base. This is actually created for um, uh, engineering um, to print draft models and stuff like that. But Dental Labs, as much as Marlon was talking about using deodorant for spray, us lab people, we tend to go out and find stuff in under indus other industries and claim it for ourselves. Well, a lot of them found this. They like the price. It has the resolution you need. You got the option of 100 microns, 50 microns, 25 microns um, in print, which is great for us ortho. It's, uh, and it's a great community, great Facebook. So if you have a question, I know three people that have these. That was another reason. And if it ever goes down and it has to be sent off to repair, I can call them, send them my preform models, and they will print them for me. And I'll do the same thing for them reliability there are some lemons out there with everything there's always lemons and in fact that doctor that called me saying he had an ultra intraoral scanner uh, he came to my lab and wanted to see my 3d printer because he wanted to start doing his own aligners which is great I love this new digital technology it puts the power back in the the dentist orthodontist hands and he resets his own teeth digitally and then prints his models well his first one he got after I recommended it to him was a lemon and I was like Oh, Dr. Hubbard, I'm so sorry. Not my fault. Uh, and then, of course, it integrates with EZRX. Now, one con, it's slow. And we're, we're going to get into that. That database, I created it with the print times, too, and you'll see how slow it is. I can do about six models in about six hours. 
works for me. I have plenty of turnaround time. I print six models. I get them off. I put the other six back on, and I go work in the lab for six hours, get those done, get the next batch out. And it just a, I, I've never run into a problem where uh, I can print one model in an hour. That's plenty of time for a rush. Um, so that, that's one of the cons. My friend that does YouTube videos also, Steve Zara, um, he just bought Envision Tech 1. He can do seven models in one hour. So, but it's $10,000. So my car is not even worth this. We had to get a rental car to come here. So <laughs> that was a bunch for me. So this is the layout. The pre-formed software comes free with your form lab. Uh, and you kind of saw it in that video. But you can see the different types. There's some horseshoe. There's full palette. These are all hollow, so there's supports all on the inside of them. Uh, and then here's my database. And I did layer thickness, how many I did, how long it took me, how long to do the selection. And then the wait time, that's a, a while because you you're working on the internet, so you choose those and you gotta wait for it to download the models into your cache and then open your preform and dump the models into your preform. So average layout times, the selection, just checking the models you wanna print, 28 seconds. The wait time for it to download off of the internet out of each one of those scripts, it downloads each out of each patient script onto one basket and puts it in your preform, 54 seconds. Again, all this is dependent on your your internet speed and that kind of stuff. Uh, layout time to orientate it, um, to put um, supports on it and stuff is two minutes, 25 seconds. Now, you know that draining thing, I got pretty good at having them all facing the same direction so they all drain at the same time. Otherwise, I gotta rotate it to get every last drop of that resin out of there. And so the total time from checking it to sending it to the printer on average was three minutes, 16 seconds. So time is money, especially when the printer's slow in printing. So average, I'm, I average about six models a day. I don't, I've had really good success with the form lab because I don't push its limits. I don't print vertical, I print them flat on the base. Um, and I only do six at a time. I've seen pictures, they put 18 of them on there and printed them. And it was 11, 12 hour print. I don't want my printer running for that long. It's, I don't even stay awake that long. Uh, layers, the average number of layers, 348. Volume, so it's $150 per liter. And my average is 38 milliliters per print. Now, if they were solid models, that of course would, would go up. And then the print time, on average, four hours and three seconds. Because sometimes I don't do six at a time, I'll do two or three. Now, if you want to take a picture of this, if you call Form Labs, if you decide you want one, you can give them this. It'll take $500 off your, so it's Form Labs for $3,000. And then I get $500 in, in, in resin. So you can take a picture of that if you want to call Form Labs. Give them that. I'm not selling anything. <laughs> I promise you. Just want to give you all a deal. I wish somebody would have given me this deal when I bought mine. But now, they've just come out with a Form 3. And it's supposed to be really nice. And they got an Excel version. It's about this big. And the build plate is like this big. You put 20-something models on it. Um, but it's got low. Uh, you can look it up. It's got all these new fandangled features on it. So demo time. We're toward the end. I'm going to turn the computer around. I'm going to sit there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check in a case and edit the models in front of you all and show you all how it's done. Uh, oh, and I found another picture on my iPad. That's my three-year-old peeking in. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Questions. I can do that. I think. No. For which part? EZRX. It's three hundred a month. No, that was Winvoice. With uh, $300 a month, you get 750 invoices for the each month. So if you do 750 cases, they give you a discount, or they'll start charging you $1.29 per invoice after you reach your 750. So it's a good problem to have if you're doing. Well, I'm a small lab, so 100 of them, I'm doing good. Wait, 
Yeah, on that, they'll waive the $1,000 fee in this fall special, the initiation fee, which I had to pay. So I'm kind of mad. I shouldn't have told y'all. But. Do you get credit if we sell anything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they don't give me anything, but they'll be like, oh, yeah, no, Cade. He gives us, he sends us customers all the time. It's, and you can see why I, I loved this software. It's everything I want it to build myself. But. Uh, they did it, and they did it way better than I could have. Mine would have been janky and, and free, and everybody would have been complaining. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, one thing I like: that there's a is it three shape that you have to become a, a lab partner with three shape. Yeah, you don't have to do it if you have EasyRx because they can tell the. Three shape people on the three shape scanner how to export the STL and then put it in a file and it runs a little program that puts it into EasyRx. So there's a workaround. Same thing with iTero. I'm not an iTero preferred partner. They just in the doctor's side of things they just log in with their I, my line tech website ID and it links the two together and so then they can go into um, they can start typing the patient's name and then it, it'll find a match of the scans they've already did and they click attach to scan or attach a script and it it pulls in in the background all those scans optimizes them all those pictures yeah well all the scans I get are open and that's why you got to use 3d to close them so you can print them is that was that your question Oh yeah. Yeah, if they can if they can export STL, they can upload it to to EasyRx. Yeah, yeah. So they they so when they do a scan, it uploads it into the Remind Align Tech. Well, somehow EZRX has worked to deal with Itero, and they can go into the doctor's account and pull those. I think it's they're pretending to be the doctor, and they got access to their own portal. So then they pull those files out and add them. So it, it's it has saved a lot of that stuff. Displays. Where am I? At? Let's mirror this thing. Okay, so I have EasyRx right here. I wonder if I can go full screen. I can. And so I'm in a web browser. So this is my account. These are all the ones I gotta check in when I get back from Lubbock. And so we we gotta check them in. So then all the green ones are. Is my mouse working? I should plug it in. Yeah, that always helps. Cause. It, I can't edit a 3D on this touchpad. It's oh, don't make me do this. It's working fine. Um, so then this is where I would check it in. I can view it. So then I made this script. This is a fake doctor. So that CEO gave me some fake doctors. So this is Joey Tribbiani. And uh, it was submitted by Dr. Drake Ramore. So if anybody gets that, you get you score 10 points. You can act, and you can actually see the patient has a monomer allergy. I thought that was funny. When you go into the patient file, you can choose metal allergy and it warns the lab, hey, there's a metal allergy or some sort of gluten allergy or something. And it warns the lab not to use that stuff. Um, so then I made this file in my fake doctor's account. Let me see if I can get this bigger. Uh, and so there's my original upload. I pulled this STL file from some other patient. Uh, and then the EasyRx has already optimized it, so I can click here. It opened up a new tab up here, so I can always go back to the file there. I'm in a new tab, still in a web browser. I click Edit. Now, I've timed this. This takes about 10 minutes, but since I'm 10 seconds. Good Lord, 10 minutes. 10 seconds. Now, since I'm live streaming and I got, I'm using up the data, it may take a little bit of time. So here's the file. 
And actually, Sarah, let me move a camera over here. You got to keep up with me. I want there you do this a little bit different. Uh, so I'm using my left click. Usually on a mesh mixer, you got to use right click to move it around like this. But I guess since it's in a web browser, uh, it's a little bit different. So then there's my left click. I can look around. I can use the mouse wheel. I can zoom in on it. I'm in a web browser. And I'm not selling you on this. But <laughs> this is a web browser. It, it, it blows my mind. The whole, remember my iPhone, iPad thing where I said it's a web app? Apple was ahead of their time. You can get internet sites to almost do anything you want now. There's no software or apps anymore. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a thing right there, a little bit of an artifact that we can remove. But I'm going to just edit this real quick. So I just go straight down this orient model and I choose left uh, molar in between the interiors and then the right terminal molar and so it makes a little triangle so now it knows which side's the occlusion which side's the intaglial surface which side is the anterior posterior and stuff and so now it, it moves around a little bit better so these are trim dots you can move them down to the trim you want but it could take forever so you just use easy trim model I don't know if Sarah can see my keyboard or not, but I'm holding down the shift button right now. So if I try to drag my mouse across here, it's going to try to move it. So if I hold shift, it's going to hold the model place, and I can drag my edit line. Let's cut that. Even though it's a wrap, I'm going to cut this off. And it's a full palette. I need acrylic all there. Now, I mentioned, oh, what did I do there? Go back. Get back there. Now, you can always go back and edit. If you see something like that's too tall, you can look at it here. If you, if you want part of the palette, if you make horseshoe retainers, you can pull this. And you can get rid of some of the height, which will save you some resin and some print layers. And then once you're all done, cross your fingers, you trim it. And now this is all happening on their server. So they're kind of telling you what they're doing. So then it's trimmed. You can check it, make sure it's good. Uh, and so then after your trim, you can just keep going down. You can click these to collapse. Now, like I said, I like to do hollow. I'm going to go with thinnest because it's, it's going to go from uh, thinnest, meaning the tallest part, it's going to go to there and stop making the model. So it's going to make a big block right here using this as the tallest part, thinnest. So two millimeters would be two millimeters to Beth. Two millimeters from this point up. Uh, wall thickness is three. Add drain holes, of course, and add base. Now, this usually takes a while depending on the height of the model because I think it goes in there and tries to go, is this the height? Nope. Is this it? Nope. Is this it? Is this it? And again, I'm in a web browser. This is all being done on their servers, and I don't have to download any of these models to my hard drive. Again, I'm doing this on my laptop. When I get home and get to my desktop, I can pull this exact same up on my web browser, already edited it, ready to go, and print, send to my printer. Yeah, it's all dependent on your dots. So I've noticed that if there's a... Uh, if it, there's a big time curve of speed, it'll throw your occlusal plane off. So you sometimes have to move your dots around to try to get a nice flat plane. Oh, there it is. So then this is perfectly flat to fit on your build plate on your printer. And then there's the inside and there's your drain holes. So now, so that you know who it is when you uh, pull it out of the printer, add a label. So there's RxID, it's pulling it all from over here. So there's RxID, there's a name. Um, the bin number was in the R. Whenever I checked it in, I assigned it a bin number. Uh, but we'll do patient name. Oh, so I'm going to engrave it, and then I'm going to say position first label. And it's like reading from left to right. You put your left block and your right block, and it'll fill in between them the name, and then you can adjust it. 
You can't adjust the size or font or anything just yet. Let's put the other one in. Let's do uh, practice name. Yeah, that would be a nice long one. Position second label. So when you click on this, it takes all this parameters and puts it into your label. So that's the practice name. Maybe we don't want to put the practice name. So I'm going to delete that. Let's just put RxID. Now, if you have two of these together, it'll string them along. It'll, RxID pra practice name will be super long. So I'm going to uncheck this position second label, just reading left to right. And this thing will fit on the teeth. You can move it around wherever you want. Uh, I always like it up in the base area. And then add label. So then it, it helps. While you wait, you can read preparing to add the base, carving label in the model. And it's going to do that twice. Because as it builds, you're going to have some unsupported areas that will collapse before it gets to the end point. So when, it's, when it's, it builds upside down, so it prints like this. So it's going to do that first layer like that. So as it gets to this layer, it's like putting the keystone in an arch. You don't have that keystone yet. So you've got to put a support as you build your arch. Otherwise, it'll... No, I don't dare. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm very, very uh, conservative. Because if, if it collapses, you've got to take your resin out, you've got to clean it, you've got to filter it, you've got to put it back in. It may ruin your machine. So I've had a machine that's problem free because I don't take risk. I print the same way every time. And, and Form Labs won't let you print, or they'll warn you till the dogs come home that this is going to fail if you try to print this. So it because it's hollow like that, it it all that will collapse in. Uh, it it won't have, so you it'll print this layer, and then another layer, and another layer, and there's no support. That layer will just fall off into the resin and then stick to the side of another one. It's a a big mess. So then uh, I got the names on there. Save model, and I'll do upper. And sometimes this takes a while, but you can't like leave the tab because now it's it's taking all those edits and making them permanent. At any point, I could go back if I was doing the name, and I'm like, I don't have enough room for name. I can go back into add base and then add two millimeters to it and come back down. So none of the edits that you're seeing, you're just seeing the representation of the edits, but none of the edits are permanent until you press save. And again, it still keeps the original model in the script so you can't mess this up you can't mess up the original model it's like a, a master cast that lives forever that's one of the great things about this so if you go back to oh that's what is that go back to your come on your script if i click the refresh but button you'll see it now pops up so now in that file for that patient you have those three files the original the original EZRX Optimize in the hollow upper STL. And uh, so that, uh, let me show you preform now. Now, there's an asterisk. You don't need, when I said you don't need a certain type of computer or anything, uh, there's some web extensions that only work on PC. So whenever I go to EZRX view STL print list, this is where I go when I'm ready to print all the files I've just edited. So then these are all the files. There's Joey Tribbiani. I select that. And if I click here, it's not going to do anything here because it, it gives an error. But uh, in, on my PC, it will go and open preform. So that's why I took that video. So you can see it pull that out of the script and throw it onto the preform software. So if I, let's see if I can open up. So let's say I don't have that and apply. So this is my preform software ready to go. It's using a fake virtual printer. 
uh, I can go back to uh, here. I can download it. So you can download your files at any time. Uh, you don't have to, especially if you're using a PC, because it'll go straight from the EZRX servers to your form lab without ever uh, being downloaded to your computer. Uh, so then there's the STL file, and I can just drag it over. Let me, uh, but for some reason, when I drag it in like this, it's always teeth down. But when I do it through EZRX, it's always on the base. So uh, I can go here. And I can do select base, and I'm like, okay, this is the bottom. So then it flips it. Done. Uh, then I can do supports. Uh, and do no raft type. Otherwise, it tried to. The dental industry is very interesting for 3D printing because we don't care about this bottom layer. Because form labs will compress those first two layers to make sure it sticks. I mean, it'll, it'll compress them down so they won't be accurate. So if you're trying to print a perfect sphere, those, it'll be a flat bottom on that sphere because it'll, it'll press those down. Um, but with dental, we don't really care about that side. We want the top side to be accurate. So uh, I can generate supports. And you see it's, it's giving me a thumbs down on, what's that say, printability. Models built directly on platform, um, and that's because I haven't given it supports yet, which it's doing it right now. So it's going in there and analyzing all the parts that it thinks it will fall without support and stick a support on there. And you can see, like on my name here, or the number, you can see that part of that seven would fall off without a support to hold it in place till it gets the top layers on top. You can uh, flip it over, and you can see all the supports that and then you can see my drain holes and then here we go I don't have a page up if you do this slider there's your first layer so you can watch this being built and you can see how it knows to put those supports right where it's going to collapse so now I've got all three print Minima or those little triangles that would fall off if, you, if they weren't supported. And then show cups. Uh, that's that suction cup. Like this would be a suction cup if, if it didn't have those drain holes. So uh, then I would just click print. So this would print time would be uh, it's not connected to a printer. But it's showing me uh, that says 364 and the volume is 12.7 milliliters. So that's, that's it for preform. And, you're doing six of them. Six fit on here easy. I've done eight before. I think that's the most I've done. Uh, but it definitely depends on the size of the mouth. You get some huge horse people in there. It's going to fill up the whole plate. But you get little kids that have braces, you can fit a lot more. All right. So that is, let me do one more demo. And I'm going to do a check-in. So this will be a written check-in. This is if I get a paper script. So I'm going to select a practice. Let's do uh, the demo practice. Doctor is uh, Drake Remore. Last name is test, first name, subject. And then you can put date of birth, bin number, let's say 1000. Uh, and then date needed, you get the calendar. Uh, Ship date would be a couple days before that. That's when you want to get it out of the lab. So let's say this is a horseshoe upper and lower, and then we don't need all that stuff. And then you check in and edit. What appliance do you want to make? Denise? I mean, Judith. Let's see. Let's start with the... So there's a wraparound. Uh, so if you see a T, that's a template that I've made. A is an, a complete appliance, and then P is part. So you can just do the part. So then there's the wraparound. I can take this. If they're missing a tooth, I can move it up or down. If, a, if you want the loop somewhere else, you can move it up or down. 
Um, if the doctor really likes a hor horseshoe uh, acrylic, you can move that, you can move this wherever you want. Uh, if you want, so what do you call the little wires here? I know they're all called I call them guides. guides. I call them keepers. And it's not in here. There it is. Now, EZRX calls it labial support wire. So they use the most generic term to describe the part. So everybody can use the same part. So I'm going to drag that here and drag that here. And so let's do. Soldered, so these are all parts. They're soldered C-class. Put one here. Soldered, their soldered pieces are in green, so you can see that. So that's ready to go. And then you can select acrylic color. These are all the acrylics I provide. I like to provide a lot of acrylic colors. I like to give the kids a lot of choices to choose from. So uh, we can do pearl. But you can even do half and half or polka dots. So let's say if you do polka dots, you can choose the base color, pearls, and let's do midnight black as the dots, and then save. So then that will tell me what I'm doing. And uh, it's saving prescription, and that's it. And then it's submitted. It's been checked in the lab. When I scan it out, oh, I thought it would give me a preview. There we go. There's the script right there, ready to print. Um, so let's talk about end of day. So let's say we're going to check this out. It's ready to go. Uh, I can go to check out. And then this is my favorite part. It's got a thing ready to go. i got a barcode scanner. And all the case bins that are done, I just go through and go boop, 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 boop and scan them all, and they just start listing them down. I have a video of that, and I didn't put it in the presentation, but it's really cool. Or you can check your scheduled ship. So let's see how busy we are on Monday, Sarah. So I'm going to set for Monday and show date. And then these are all the things that have got to go out Monday. And it gives me a summary. There's three removables, five fixed, four printed models, and then some miscellaneous. Uh, and then these tags, these are sitting in the print queue right now. And the doctors can actually see these tags. Um, and I can check out the select it from here. Uh, and then it goes into, um, I'm going to check out that one, Drake Remore. Let's view it. You can check it out from here. That means you're done with it. It's completed. Now this will show up completed on the doctor's side. Um, so then I can go to check out, and it'll show up there. Now this is cool. Anybody here use WorldShip, UPS WorldShip? It's a program just for UPS and you install it on your PC and then if you do generate shipments if it's a thing uh, doctor you ship to you can choose delivery driver UPS ground USPS but if you choose UPS ground you can say it's, it weighs one pound and this is the size of the box generate shipments you click that and it sends it over to uh, your UPS world ship and you can print your labels so if you have Five things you're shipping to five different offices will print five different labels, all going to the right office. And then you, then you can generate the invoice right here. I just made some extra money on a fake patient. Then I can go to invoice here, and then I can now if you you can view it. So then there's the cost. So uh, there's the wraparound, and the keepers. It's all listed there. If I need to make a change, I can go back by clicking here. And go back to the the script. Uh, I can save it as a PDF, or if I made a mistake, I can edit it and I can add right here. I can just put extra clasp or something, four dollars, and change the subtotal. Uh, you can do all this before it's like a last minute thing, uh, and then you can click this and you can print, and it creates your invoice. And I don't have a printer hooked up, but there's your invoice going out. Now, uh, now, talking about the whole workflow thing, uh, invoicing. So this is, all this is a part of the enterprise level, the biggest level, all this invoicing. Because then now I can export invoices. These are all the invoices I need to click and export. 
and it goes right into QuickBooks and creates invoices for all those, and then you can send statements out at the end of the month. And that it's got an invoice number, it's got the price. You can view them all, you can edit them there. Um, and then today's invoices is that one. Uh, now when you're done with the day, you go to end of day. And I left this up. So these are all the things we shipped out Friday. And I can go back and, and view each one if I want to. Uh, but once I select all and do end of day, it goes to each one of those and says complete it, complete it, or shipped, 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 shipped. So the doctor can see that it has been shipped. And then you can even go, when you do the, uh, this is another cool thing, when you do the UPS world ship here, um, it would al also export the shipping numbers back into the script. So it will actually, so the doctor can view that script and then it'll show this is uh, coming in. So, but you can also do it manually here. So this was USPS, I could go here and then I could scan the box before I ship it out and it puts the tracking number in there. Saves it not only into that patient file, but if it's a bunch of them, it saves it into each individual patient file. So if uh, I can go here, see I've shipped this to Epic Orthodox. So if I go to that patient, I can track outgoing package and I click that and it'll open up uh, UPS and the tracking and it was delivered Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. So saves a lot of calls you get. Where's the package? Um, one last thing, remember before I show you this, we are a small two-person lab, but you click here and it tracks all your sales. This is how much you make per day. And you can see we're up and down. We have busy days, we have slow days, we have days that we prep. Um, you can set uh, a monthly goal. So I want our business to pull in this per, remember we are a small lab. Uh, and it tells you what you made last month in, in invoicing. It tells you what you've made this month um, and then how much you've made per day. So you can set your monthly goal, you can set your, um, how many business days you work that month and it will start counting down and telling you, hey, uh, we're negative three business days because I work some weekends and it thinks I was working a business day. Uh, but it tells me my adjusted daily goal is I need to produce 439 to meet this, which I've already passed, so thank God. Uh, but then it shows you your top sales September, top sales in August. Uh, I hear the drinks being made, so I'm going to make this quick. And then it repairs. <laughs> so you, uh, it'll tell you, huh? The drinks? Yeah. Well, I want, when you scan the thing, I want it to go ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Uh, that's what I want them to build into the software. So this will also count how many repairs you've had to do, um, your sales during the last 12 months, your top, top sales declines, your top, I mean, it just starts adding all this together. October, your best doctors in October, so you can send them a gift uh, and a bill. So that's, that's it. I'm going to end it there. So everybody get a drink. Are you all ready? Yeah. All right.